Eight days after the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, two days before the first debate, just 37 days now from the final votes. Another unprecedented twist in this unpredictable campaign. No Supreme Court justice has ever been confirmed this close to an election, but Republicans are already closing ranks behind Judge Amy Coney Barrett, hoping to jolt the election and cement a conservative majority on the Supreme Court for decades. Democrats are defiant, calling the process a sham, warning that a Justice Barrett could be a mortal threat to American health care, hoping to spark their own backlash at the polls. And as we come on the air this morning, our brand new poll with the Washington Post shows a majority of Americans believe the president elected on November 3rd should fill this Supreme Court vacancy. It's against the backdrop of a presidential race that's been stable for months, with Joe Biden now holding a steady 10-point lead over President Trump. John Carl is at the White House this morning. And John, this is President Trump's third nomination to the Supreme Court. And these court appointments are the glue that binds President Trump to Senate Republicans. George, these judicial appointments have kept Republicans in lockstep with Donald Trump. Even Republicans who have deep misgivings about his personal behavior or other issues. Uh, but almost across the board, Republicans are enthusiastic about Amy Coney Barrett. Above all, they are ecstatic to have something else to talk about besides Donald Trump and his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, George, I would expect Republicans, Senate Republicans especially, uh, to try to make Amy Coney Barrett the face of the Republican Party effectively over the next five weeks rather than Donald Trump, because they know that Donald Trump has been a drag on Senate candidates in state after state. The goal is to get this done before Election Day. Any way Democrats can get it beyond November 3rd? Well, I, I just spoke to a, uh, a top d Democratic strategist who told me flatly that there is no procedural silver bullet. The Democrats on their own have no ability to delay this vote until after the election. The timing is in Mitch McConnell's hands. Now, the Republicans have outlined a, a series of events which would lead to a final vote the week before the election. So there's very little uh, room for error here, but it would have to be a Republican decision. The Republicans would have to decide it is in their interest to delay. And, George, as you saw, as you mentioned at the top of the show, uh, the decision to go forward with a vote on the next Supreme Court justice before the election is a deeply unpopular one. Democrats will hit that hard over and over again between now and the election. John Carl, thanks very much. Let's bring in our Supreme Court analyst, Kate Shaw, now. Welcome this morning. You know, Judge Barrett clerked for Justice Antonin Scalia, and she made it very clear yesterday that she shares his judicial philosophy. What does that mean for the court if she's confirmed? You know, it is harder to imagine a starker contrast with Ruth Bader Ginsburg than Amy Coney Barrett. So, concretely, I think she would vote to overturn Roe versus Wade not just to chip away at it. I think she would vote to strike down gun regulations. And I think she could well side with the Trump administration in its efforts to have the Affordable Care Act struck down in its entirety, including the protections uh, for pre-existing conditions. So I think more broadly, she would cement a rock-solid conservative majority on the Supreme Court for, say, the next 30 years. By all accounts, she's a brilliant lawyer. What are likely to be the flashpoints at the confirmation hearings? You know, I think it's right. She's very well-regarded, well-liked. I don't think anyone's going to be able to raise issues about her qualifications, her character, her judicial temperament. But on the merits, on the substance, I think Roe versus Wade and the future of legal abortion in this country will be a significant issue. I presume she will be noncommittal, but if you look at what thing, the things that people like uh, Senator Josh Hawley have been saying, there should be a litmus test. The litmus test should be, would you overturn Roe? And that she passes the litmus test. It is clear where members of the Republican Party believe she stands on Roe, um, the future of the Affordable Care Act in the moment of this pandemic. And actually, I think the election itself could be a flashpoint. The president has repeatedly suggested that getting her confirmed is important because there will be inevitable election disputes. He is broadcasting the idea that she would potentially weigh in and potentially weigh in on his side in such a dispute. And I think that does raise questions about independence and uh, lo the legitimacy of the timeline that the Republicans have laid out. None of that is Judge Barrett's fault, but it's the sort of thing that is going to have to be addressed in the confirmation process. Thank you, Kate. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.